here is what I feel is something worth talking about. It's called Buddhism, by the way. Buddhism is just a conversation between two people. There's two types of people that run into the, on this planet. There is the Buddha, and then there is one who is not yet a Buddha. So I was going to talk to you about what all Buddhas end up talking about. And it's been talked about since, well, the rumor has it's 5,000 years. Been doing something over there in the Tibetan, and the, and the, you know, in the, in the Himalayas in Tibet. And so, um, but we are lucky to have an extension of what has been held on to for that long and practiced and attained to, which uh, they have a history already. It's kind of strange. The way that the culture inside of the Tibetan monasteries that are very much off limits to the public at large Really, I mean, there's a lot that has been destroyed, as you know, just hiking up to the up to the peak of Mount Everest. Um, it's a it's a it's a it's a trash heap. The amount of oxygen tanks that is discarded and it, it, there's a trail going through a, a trash heap up to the the peak. Now, what is described, you know, the Sherpas. They're called Sherpas, who they. Um, take the people um, they they probably don't exist anymore I mean they they take the people up to the top make sure they survive and, and everything and um, but of course now you have all kinds of technology that will take the place of the, the Sherpa and even your own ability to make it you know just here let me put my oxygen mask on and, and keep going or something and while the Sherpas do it like daily, they just walk up to Mount Everest and back because they kind of live halfway up. And anyway, um, the Sherpas are now, it's a nightmare, you know, with um, the dumps. They have to ma manage the dump full of water containers and wrappers and tourists that want to clean, climb the mountain. But you can bet on the side from there where there's warring on the fringes, you know, the, the Chinese in Tibet, they've always said free Tibet. They're protecting a people there who are Buddhists. And they have an archive in the mountain. They dug a hole in the mountain. It's, well, how long is it? It's very, it's a very long tunnel. And it's just a library where they've, where um, each Buddha becomes enlightened, and he and they he she tell the story about the ways that the entire global population and or man will become enlightened and find the truth about reality the truth about the mind and, and stuff like this. You see, if, if you've ever watched The Matrix, and I'm sorry if this conversation co cuts out because my computer, maybe I should just make some space now, but if you've ever, ever watched the movie Matrix, I mean, I saw it once or twice. I saw it many years ago, and I, it would be interesting to see all these movies again. Really, it's interesting to listen to everything again and all the movies again, especially that was the music that was played before say oh, up until the 80s, even some rap, the rappers that came out and started talking about some things and before it got, before, phew, it's been taken over. Talk about hijacking and why and how that would be possible. We're going to get into it. We have to. We have to look into it. And of course, the people that um, know about the mind will, will get to it first. 
And in fact, they have already have. That's why I was trying to explain that the, the people in Tibet, if you become a meditator, your mind is different. It's not sick, first of all. You know, it's not locked and encapsulated in itself. It doesn't use itself and, and tear at the being of everything, really, just to get itself into mastery and it's like you're not even a master babe you know the master is to get away from mind and find out the truth and reality see just storytelling kind of like here but we already hear and see about possibility of superhuman um powers opening up then it's already here you know levitation blah 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 this and that like that and that's how what will, what what would happen if we do transcend, say, the mind. The main thing the thing I wanted to talk about that that has lead into to, to back into the Tibetan monasteries here, which is only appropriate, because of the, these are the people who have held on to the most simplest, not a concept either. This is something beyond mind. The masters are and. Um, so getting back to this place where in the hills there's like a, oh is it 60 miles or 16 i forget but it's a long cave you guys full of just an archive of thin little pieces something has landed there i think it's ice cracking um pieces of rice rice paper what, what the monks do is they they etch it into um bamboo the simple way that somebody is going to figure out oh my god we are one with the universe kind of a thing but in a very real way and one of the ways that was written it was more than 1500 years ago they they etch it down first on bamboo and then they get a rice paper and put it over and get charcoal and and make a copy and then they set it way up on the shelf way back in the cave and they've been doing this for more than well five thousand years as long as buddhism has been around and so um what they have come up with one of the ways that man will become enlightened is through